Welcome everyone. Um, welcome to the virtual college exploration for all Indiana students sponsored by the Indiana Association for College Admission, Counseling and StriveScan. Um, Want to just give a few announcements before we start and thank you for joining us. Um, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time and they will address those during the Q&A portion of the session. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Just keep that in mind. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at anacac.org, I-N-A-C-A-C.org. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week on the same website, anacac.org. And now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. Hi, everybody, and welcome, and thanks for joining us today. Um, my name is Haley Crouch, and I am an admissions counselor here at IUPUI. Um, I have been here for about three years and graduated from IUPUI um, a few years back. So that's me. <laughs> um, Alice, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Um, my name is Alice Matuk. I'm the senior admissions counselor at IUPUI, and I've um, been with the office for nearly um, 15 years now and did my undergraduate and graduate studies at IUPUI. You're welcome. I can go. My name is Jaleesa King. I am a senior admissions counselor at IUPUI. I'm celebrating two years in the office as of this month and also an alumni, so um, two degrees from IUPUI as well. Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa Luna and I'm a senior admissions counselor with IUPUI. Um, also did my bachelor's and master's at IUPUI um, and I've been with the Office of Admissions um, for about two years. Yay, so that's us. Welcome everybody though. Um, we are gonna go over some general information about IUPUI as a university and kind of what that means. So there are a lot of letters there and then we're gonna jump into the application process before answering any questions you both have. So let's jump right in. Uh, what is IUPUI? We are Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis. So uh, that's, like I said, pretty long, covers a lot of things, but uh, the first four letters are our degree programs. So um, that IU and PU. So we, we have about 28,000 students and all of those students are IU PUI students. But when they graduate, they'll leave with either an IU or a Purdue degree, depending on what they study. So students who study most of our science programs or engineering programs will leave with a Purdue degree. And then students who study things like business, nursing, uh, philanthropy, public health, those students are generally going to leave with an IU degree. And what's nice about that is that students can also mix and match. So if you wanted to study chemistry uh, with a Purdue degree and pair that with a language through the School of Liberal Arts and get an IU degree, then you can leave with both an IU and a Purdue degree from one university in four years. So there are quite a few choices there for mixing and matching. Um, and that's our first four letters, like I said, and we'll talk a little bit more about that last I in Indianapolis here in just a moment. But uh, let's go on to our next slide. So this is a nice picture of campus and the city. So here we have the IUPUI Campus Center, which is the hub of student life. We also have uh, Carroll Stadium, our soccer field, and the Natatorium, which is one of the fastest pools in the country. Uh, so we do regularly host Olympic time trials, which is really exciting. I know that was something that I volunteered with as a student at IUPUI. I was able to see Michael Phelps from about eight feet away, which was really neat. Um, and then we also have the rest of campus here. And right across the street from campus is downtown Indianapolis. So you can um, pretty easily walk to everything from um, Lucas Oil Stadium, Bankers Life Fieldhouse, it's more of a, I would say, bike ride. Um, and then we also have the State Capitol Building, Salesforce Tower, which is a really big um, technology company. And then everything from small businesses up to Fortune 500 companies, as well as things like the Indianapolis Zoo, Museum, uh, and fun neighborhoods. So there's a lot that you can do in the city professionally and also for fun. And so that gives our students a lot of opportunities um, to not only have a really strong campus environment, but also expand out further than that into the city of Indianapolis and take advantage of the state capital of Indiana. These are some of our degree programs. Um, we do have a lot of schools on campus that offer right around 550 academic programs. And so um, with that, 
when we are looking at our different degree programs, you're not choosing if you want an IU or a Purdue program, you're choosing your major. And then from there, we'll either receive that IU or Purdue degree. And so on all of our websites and in our view book that we can share electronically, they're color coded. So you know what you would be getting with your degree program. But this is the different schools that we offer on campus through which you can uh, gain it, an IUPUI degree. We do have the RISE initiative, and that covers a lot of different things on campus. So going through kind of one by one, we have uh, research, international experience, service learning, and experiential learning. So you can be doing research as soon as your first semester of freshman year, and you can be published, uh, published and paid for the research that you're doing. So there are a lot of scholarships that are based on research. Um, and if you're looking to go into a research-related field or a competitive professional program like medicine or dentistry, then having that research in your background can really help you stand out. We also do have a lot of study abroad opportunities as well as uh, language options. So with study abroad, generally students can study anywhere from two weeks up to a 12-month calendar year. And we have access to IU programs, Purdue programs, and IUPUI programs. So again, there's a lot to choose from. Regarding service learning, we have opportunities on campus, such as through um, Pause Pantry, which is a food pantry for anybody in the IUPUI community. And we also have access to opportunities within the city. So you can do one day volunteer opportunities, um, a semester long opportunity, or if there's something you find you're really passionate about, you can volunteer the entire time that you're doing your degree program. And so there are some options there. And I do wanna mention again, that with service learning, there are scholarships that are service focused. And so uh, you might be able to earn a scholarship for getting involved uh, in that way. And then lastly is experiential learning. So some degree programs have built in experiential learning. So programs like education, you'll have student teaching or nursing, you'll have your uh, clinicals. And so that's built into the program. But some of them encourage you to do that experiential learning. And what's nice about, again, being in Indianapolis is that we have access to the city. And so while you can just study during the school year and do an internship over the summer, you also have the option to be really strategic with your schedule and do classes on maybe Tuesday and Thursday and an internship Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, you also could do an internship, like we said, in the city or because we have connections all over the country and some programs around the world, you have that flexibility to again go other places and do those internships. So the biggest thing with uh, experiential learning is that you're chatting with your professors and your program's employment office because all of the schools on campus have employment resources where you can go and have your resume looked over. Um, they can get you information about upcoming job fairs, and a lot of times you can even do mock interviews, which can really help you to get comfortable. So um, definitely take advantage of those. And that'll set you up really well for when you're ready to graduate to have that experience and know that what you're doing is what you actually want to be doing. I mentioned before, we have a lot of clubs uh, on campus, about 500, but students also have access to the city. So while we do have a strong campus, we have uh, Division I athletics, we also have Indianapolis. So there's a lot to choose from. And we do have housing on campus as well. I wanna highlight here that it is first come first serve. So if you're interested in living on campus, it's really important that you apply early. So I would recommend uh, thinking about that before New Year's. So this way, um, if you decide in the spring that you want to live on campus, it's available to you. But we have everything from traditional resident halls up to apartments that are on campus for students. And that is the basics of the university. Um, and now we're going to talk more about how you can get here. Right. Yeah, so uh, I know some of you may have already started the application process, while others of you may be looking at kind of the next steps in terms of how to apply. Um, so on the next slide, um, you know, I'm going to go through you know, the different application processes. Um, one um, is the Apply IU application, which will allow you to apply to multiple IU campuses using one application fee or a waiver um, using this application. If you are a 21st century scholar, it will automatically waive your application fee using the Apply IU application. The other option, depending upon the schools that you're looking at applying to, um, you may feel like using the common application would be your best option. 
Um, you do generally pay an application fee per school that you're applying to. However, there are waiver options within the common application. Um, 21st century scholars are not automatically waived using the application fee. I'm sorry, using the common application. Um, both applications do require an essay, um, 200 to 400 word essay. Um, you can write about why you've chosen IUPUI, how it might be a good fit for you, um, maybe a major that you're hoping to pursue at IUPUI, um, write about a challenge that you've overcome or how you've been involved within your community, whether at your school or within your town or city. Um, once you've submitted your application to IUPUI, um, you will want to work with your high school counselor to have a transcript sent over to IUPUI. We do prefer the electronic option, either document, um, DocuFied, Parchment, Family Connections, um, or if you're uncertain what options are available at your school, um, work with your school counseling department and they can you know, help you navigate that process. Um, we will also accept US Postal Mail transcripts to us. And then next, in terms of um, test scores, the SAT or ACT test scores, um, IEPUI has gone test optional this year. Um, so you can, um, in your application, indicate whether you want IEPUI to utilize SAT or ACT scores in the review of your application. Um, I know not everyone's a great test taker, or maybe you just feel like, well, the test scores aren't necessarily reflective of your academic ability, or maybe you just haven't had a chance to take the SAT or ACT. Um, at this point. Um, so using test optional um, can be an option available to you. Um, and we can still um, review you for admission as well as many of our scholarships that are available at IUPUI on um, both admission-based and competitive-based scholarships um, in the review of your application. Um, and this highlights our average admission requirements and it's broken down um, based upon whether you're applying with test scores or without test scores. Um, and we will take your cumulative GPA from your high school transcript, um, everything from freshman year up to the point that you're applying to IUPUI. Um, if you have a weighted GPA on your transcript, we will accept the weighted GPA given that it's higher than your um, unweighted GPA. And so what we'll look at is your um, overall academic rigor. So here in Indiana, we refer to that as core 40 or academic honors diploma equivalencies, four years of English, three years of math, three years of so social sciences, three years of laboratory sciences, PE, health, other courses to make up core 40. And um, so those are kind of some of the things that we'll be looking for in terms of um, the review of your application by the admissions committee, in addition to your essay and other um, facets that you've included in your application. And if you have had a chance to take AP or dual credit courses um, throughout your high school career, um, you want to be sure to send those scores on to us um, from College Board if they are AP tests um, that will be available at the end of your senior year. Or if you have taken dual credit courses where you're earning high school and college credit and it's outside of the IU or Indiana University system, be sure to contact that college or university at the end of your senior year to have a an official transcript sent over to IUPUI. And those can be directed to mycredit at iupui.edu. And in terms of scholarship opportunities, um, there are a variety of scholarships that are available at IUPUI. Um, the first one I'm gonna speak of um, would be the Honors College Scholarships. Um, we do have an upcoming deadline date of November 15. Um, students do have to be admitted to IUPUI in order to access the scholarship portal um, through one.iu.edu and submit the Honors College um, application. Um, it will require letters of recommendations, essays uh, to complete out that um, application process. And um, students will be notified in December of um, next steps um, from the Honors College. And secondly, we have competitive-based scholarships um, and diversity scholarships available at IEPUI. Um, there may be scholarships specific to a um, particular academic program that you're hoping to pursue. Maybe you've been involved within um, your community um, doing community service. There's a Sam H. Jones Community Service Scholars Award. Um, I've served on um, scholarship committees for the Norman Brown Diversity and Leadership Scholars Program. Um, there's scholarships for students who have a passion for social justice. Sam Maseraki scholarship, just as a few um, examples to share 
Um, those will require essays, letters of recommendations, and a separate application um, using the um, general scholarship application that can be found um, at one.iu.edu. Uh, many of those dates um, are um, February 15th um, for the competitive-based scholarships. Um, some um, academic scholarships may have February 1st deadlines. So just kind of keep those in mind. And then lastly are the admission-based scholarships. When you apply to IUPUI and meet um, admission criteria, we'll automatically um, consider you for admission-based scholarships. Um, students who have at least a 3.5 GPA or higher will be eligible for a Jaguar Excellence Award. Um, and you do need to apply by February 15th for consideration of admission-based scholarships. Again, um, the last two generally don't require the SAT or ACT test scores. Um, the Honors College, um, do want to emphasize, do require the SAT or ACT um, test scores um, for review of the um, Honors College um, scholarships. Um, you could submit the application to the Honors College, but um, for them to review it, they will need the SAT or ACT test score. So if you don't yet have scores now, um, just get those in um, as soon as possible. And then for financial aid, uh, October 1st is when students were able to submit their FAFSA application. Um, the IEPUI school code is 001813. And by completing the FAFSA um, by November 15th, um, students will get notification of their financial awards uh, mid-December. Uh, the FAFSA application includes information on loans um, that you do have to pay back at a reduced interest rate. Grants are monies that you don't have to pay back and work study would be jobs that are specifically on campus to students who are work study eligible. And so um, financial aid, um, you know, is in addition to scholarship opportunities at IEPUI to help offset the expenses of attending IEPUI. And this a slide talks about um, the costs of attending IEPUI. Um, the first uh, column refers to students who are Indiana residents living on campus at IUPUI. Um, the second column refers to students who are considered non-residents of Indiana. And then lastly would be students who are uh, from states uh, that are part of the Midwest Student Exchange Program. And those states are listed down at the bottom. But the first row um, refers to tuition and fees for one academic year, two semesters, a full-time enrollment um, being 12 credit hours to 18 credit hours each semester. And then um, that's for you know, one year. And then second row would be the room and board. If you're, you're living on campus, um, it's anywhere from 10,000 to 11,000 or so um, to live on campus. That includes your meal plan too. So those are probably the two key expenses on campus. And then there's some additional estimations um, below that. Just remember scholarships and financial aid can help offset those expenses at IUPUI. And some of you may have already had a chance to visit IUPUI. Maybe you've come to an on-campus visit or have done um, a drive-through of campus uh, recently, or maybe you have already participated in some of our virtual visit options on campus. But I just want to highlight that we are currently offering um, campus visit experiences. Um, On-campus opportunities are throughout the week, generally um, 10, 12, and 2 p.m. I think when I looked at the schedule earlier today, um, many of our um, dates are um, getting full this month. Um, however, the first few weeks of November um, are fairly open at this time. Um, there's some academic units that are also meeting with students in person, so you can sign up for those academic information sessions. You can just go online um, to our admissions website and register um, under the Visit IUPUI tab um, for those on-campus um, options. Additionally, virtual options will be listed. Um, so those include information sessions from academic units. Um, we have essay writing workshops. We have scholarship series. Uh, I know tomorrow we have our 21st century scholarship session. Um, we have um, the Norman Brown Diversity Leadership Scholarship Session that's um, later this fall. And lastly, we have Spanish speaking sessions. Um, I think one is held this Thursday. So those are just some of our visit options, you know, where you can come and visit with us. And then I think on our next slide, we've got contact information for all the panelists um, who are here. But then um, I think we're gonna have some time here for you to 
you know, be able to an, you know, ask some questions um, using the Q&A um, option. Thanks for joining us today. Can one of you guys answer the question, how can you make an application stick out, specifically the essay portion? Yeah, I can go ahead and share my insights because um, I have reviewed some essays during the application. And so what I always recommend students, um, you know, first is to share, um, you know, why you're applying to IUPUI, what you plan to major in, that's always a good place to start. Um, but then to also share a little bit about what your plans are, um, you know, what you're passionate about, if there's anything that you're involved in, I always stress that. So if you're involved in any type of extracurriculars or a club, um, if you're part of sports, um, if you've ever done any type of like volunteer or com community service type work, um, or if you're involved in like your church or a religious organization, um, like any and all of that looks good. Um, you know, if you're working, if you're babysitting, just kind of share, you know, what are you doing outside of class time? And, you know, what are you interested in? What are you passionate about? Um, I always think that's a really good place to start and kind of build from there. Awesome. I was, I was going to throw out to uh, one simple thing to do for your essay to make sure that it positively reflects your abilities is to make sure there aren't any glaring errors and that you list the correct university. Those are the very absolute baseline. <laughs> Everything else that Alyssa mentioned is going to help you to have a strong essay, but those are things that are just you need to do them to have a decent essay. Does IEPY have any um, specific academic support services to help maybe with math classes or writing or things like that? Well, I'll go ahead and take that question. Um, so at IEPY, we have a variety of services that are available to students you know, who may need some additional academic support. So I know I wasn't a great math student um, and I utilize the math support center. So um, it's now called the math assistance center, the MAC, and they have um, individuals who can help students navigate the information and, um, you know, be with other students in small groups to, you know, um, kind of break down the information and just be more comfortable with it. Um, there's also the writing center that helps students, staff and faculty um, with their writing pieces. Um, so um, I think appointments can be scheduled through the writing center. There's a speaker's lab um, in the lower level of Kavanaugh Hall where the School of Liberal Arts is housed and they will record students' speeches or presentations and provide constructive feedback. Um, Cause I know many of your courses, you know, will require presentations. Um, there's also um, the Adaptive Educational Services Office um, that helps students with um, you know, defined disabilities to help them you know, navigate their um, university studies. So those are just a few of the um, resources um, that are available to students. And it's important just to connect with them um, and to help them guide you um, throughout your course work at IEPY. I don't know if anyone else has anything else to add. Um, what about college fit? So how do I know that IEPY would be the right school for me? How do I decide what college is gonna be best for me? What are some things to think about or consider when applying? I would say for college fit um, is a couple of things that you can think about is one, um, I'd say first and foremost, make sure that it's a school that does have what you're interested in studying. So that should be the very first thing that you're looking at. You know, does it have the school or their major that you're interested in pursuing? Um, and, you know, and if you're thinking about a lot of different things, you know, are the schools you're looking at, would they provide, you know, all those different options? So, you know, for example, maybe you're thinking about business, but you're also also thinking about something in the healthcare field and you're just not sure which way to go, um, you know, or the schools that you're looking at, would they be able to provide you with both? Because, um, you know, I think they say the average college student changes their major at least three times. Um, not to say that you will, but it can happen. Um, so if you do decide to change your major, could you still pursue that new major at your school? Um, so I say that's the number one thing to think about. And then two is to think about, you know, 
what type of environment, what type of campus environment do you want to be in? Do you want to be in a small school, um, small class size, small town? Do you want to be in a big, um, you know, environment like a large city, um, you know, with, you know, with more students, more activities, more things to do? Um, you know, so think about like the location, think about the, the school size, um, you know, what type of programmings or events are they offering that you might be interested in? Um, and then, of course, always make sure that it has the studies that you're interested in pursuing and can also provide you the opportunities that you need, you know, to pursue that. So, you know, like if you're going for business, are there internship opportunities or if you're going in the healthcare field, are there opportunities to get that type of experience as well? Um, so those are things that uh, you should be considering as you're looking through um, what kind of school you want to go to. Thanks, Alyssa. Um, is there a difference in majors or programs between IUPUI and IUPUC? There are. Um, there are generally more programs going to be offered here. We have about 500, we have 550 programs. So there's a lot to choose from. I'm not sure offhand how many are available at um, IUPUC. I know they still have quite a few, but um, it's not, not quite that many. Um, that said, both IUPUI and IUPUC do offer IU and Purdue degrees. Um, and so just definitely take a look at both of those, again, programs and make sure that they have what you want. And then also the experiences that you want, like Alyssa was talking about. Um, yeah. Um, Melissa mentioned college size, IUPUI, a big school. Yes, we are considered a large university. We're about 30,000 students total. Um, we have 22,000 at the undergraduate level and then about 8,000 at the graduate level. Um, and I believe our student faculty ratio is 17 to one. How safe is your campus since it's located in a large city, especially if you live on campus? Well, I can go ahead and take that question. Um, so in terms of, um, you know, our on-campus, um, you know, living, I mean, students have access to the IUPUI police department, um, you know, with any needs or concerns, um, you know, we have um, different lights across campus, you know, that directly link with um, the campus police department. Um, we do have um, different safety programs for students, um, just to, so, you know, understand, you know, navigating safe, you know, being safe on campus, um, those resources that are available. And, and on campus living, I mean, to access any of the buildings, students do have to um, swipe in with their um, JAG tag um, to get into, you know, you know, certain buildings or, you know, where the residence halls, um, where students reside in the upper floors for certain buildings. What about after graduation? Do you know if students typically stay around Indianapolis? Do they go everywhere? What have some of your students done once they've graduated from IUPUI? So a lot of students because of the internship opportunities will stay in Indianapolis because they've made connections here professionally. Um, but we do have students who go to places like uh, Chicago, California. Um, we've had students who go abroad as well. So it depends on what you're doing. Um, but we have had students who have gone on to work at um, any of the hospitals on or around campus if they're looking for those different medical programs or um, music therapy. We've had students, some of our um, kind of famous alumni have worked on Pixar movies or uh, one of the alum of Heron School of Art and Design is actually the creator of Clifford the Big Red Dog, um, which is pretty fun. Um, and then we do have, um, depending on what you want to study, they, they go everywhere. <laughs> um, so there's a lot to choose from. But again, everything from small businesses up to those Fortune 500 companies. And because we have access to job fairs at IUPUI, IU um, Bloomington, and Purdue West Lafayette, students have access to a lot of different potential employers when they are ready to be looking for those full-time jobs. And some of those are going to be locally based, but others are going to be all over the country. And so that gives you the opportunity, if you're looking to go somewhere else, 
to do so um, and get an idea. Um, I do want to mention, if we have a quick second, uh, the study away program. And so that can be cool if you're thinking about, if you're maybe from Indiana and you're thinking about going somewhere else, but you haven't ever before. Um, so the study away program allows you to study at a different university within the program because it's an exchange program uh, for the same cost of going to IUPUI. And you'll still graduate with an IUPUI degree. They'll be able to have done that one semester somewhere else. So that might be uh, places like Washington, D.C. If you have an internship lined up, it could be um, places like Washington or Alaska. Um, some students go to fancy places like Hawaii, but that's really hard to get into. Um, but it gives you the option to see a different place and kind of test it out to see if you would want to move there for longer without the time commitment of saying, okay, I'm moving here forever. It's just one semester. So that can be a really cool opportunity as well. That's very helpful. Um, what does diversity look like at IEPUI? Are there any specific programs or opportunities for diverse events or things like that? Yeah, I can answer that. So um, numbers wise, we're at about 30% as far as um, students that come from underrepresented backgrounds or students that are considered minorities. Um, for programming, we do have a multicultural center on campus, um, which houses a lot of our social identity based student organizations. So like our Black Student Union, our Latino Student Organization. Um, it also houses our LGBTQ plus center um, and the student organization within there. Um, and then we also, because we have 20 to Greek chapters total on our campus, which also includes our multicultural Greek chapters. You know, so if you're interested in joining a fraternity or sorority, but that's social identity based, um, there's those options as well. Um, and then we also have some scholarships on campus that are specific to students who come from underrepresented backgrounds, which I know Alice touched on some of these. Um, so like our Norman Brown scholarship, um, which is for students who come from underrepresented backgrounds um, and that have, you know, are high achievers in high school. Um, we also have our Olani on scholarship, which is for students who are interested in studying um, Africana studies. Uh, we also have our um, NINA and our Thrive program, which is for students who, um, you know, have experienced homelessness or the foster care system or are, are considered independent, um, like financially independent. Um, and so we have a lot of different programs on our campus to help support students um, and help build that community as well. Thanks, Alyssa. Um, are there any majors that you would say are unique to IEPUI? Yeah. Um, so IEPUI does have a number of unique uh, majors. Um, one would be the Forensic Sciences program within the Purdue School of Science. So maybe some of you have watched CSI over the years and have interest in that. Uh, so we've got that at IEPUI and we have a lot of out-of-state students who find us because there aren't very many programs and Hey, um, IUPUI is lucky to have that here in Indiana, um, in, in Indianapolis specifically, so students get you know, a variety of um, experiences hands-on. Uh, we also are known for racing with the Indy 500 um, just around the corner from our campus in Speedway. Uh, so we um, have a motorsports engineering degree program at IUPUI. So some of our students you know, are uh, maybe interested in IndyCar or NASCAR and really um, get hands-on experiences and involved in racing. We also have the only school of philanthropy in the world. So there's a philanthropic studies degree program for students who may um, want to start up their own nonprofit organization, have interest in fundraising, or just making a positive difference within their community, whether that's locally or globally. Um, you know, that's an opportunity available at IUPUI. And then I think some other unique uh, majors include like music therapy, music technology, um, within the School of Engineering and Technology. I think also healthcare engineering technology management for some of you who may have interest in healthcare, but um, maybe not necessarily direct patient care, um, but like to put things together, take things apart. There's healthcare engineering technology management. I you know a few years ago, it was one of the top majors um, that people had never heard of. And honestly, I probably wouldn't have heard of it, you know, but work at IUPY, so I have to learn, you know, our 550 majors, you know, programs on campus. So those are just a few of our unique majors on campus. Awesome. Can um, anyone address any cool internships or research that's been done by IEPUI students and faculty? Let's 
some of the cool internships that I've heard about, um, we've had students, like music therapy students, be able to intern at an area hospital working as um, kind of a music therapist in training. Um, we've had students who were able to intern in California working with game design. And um, while we do have a full-time internship that works at the state house for students, we have several students every year who participate in that. And it's, it's open to everybody, but since it's less than a mile from campus, a lot of times IUPUI students will uh, apply for it. Um, we've also had students who have gone to Washington, D.C. to do those internships uh, when they're interested in things like criminal justice, um, political science, communication, uh, those sorts of things. So there are some options there too. Um, and then, let's see, I think that those are some of the cooler internships that I've heard about. Do you guys have any other internships that you, yeah. Yeah, let's see, I think I had a question one time. We were, I was in the Liberal Arts Career Advising Center and I asked, hey, what are some cool internships for your students? And they said they had a couple of their students one year that um, did an internship with NASA. I thought that was really cool. Do you have any specific advice for junior year of high school um, and things to consider before senior year and then any special advice for seniors and things to keep in mind? I would say my biggest advice for juniors is to be visiting and going on virtual visits now uh, through the summer. This way you have an idea of if you're looking for a large school or a small school, if you want something that's in the city or more of a college town, um, public versus private, because those are a lot of things that can contribute to your college experience. Um, and having an idea of that, having been on one of those campuses can help you to narrow it down. Um, and then also, um, it just helps you this way, starting August of your senior year, you know exactly where you want to apply. And so that'll save you some stress for senior year. Um, and then I think some other folks are about to talk to. <laughs> Can I be a pre-med student at IUPUI? Yes, um, you can. Uh, there's, um, to be pre-med or sometimes people call it pre-professional as in you want to attend a, a professional school like medical school, you know, after you graduate with your bachelor's degree. Um, so students will do um, a variety of different majors at IUPUI, um, which is a great thing about IUPUI is there's a lot of different ways that you can be pre-med. Um, so some students will gravitate towards like our school of science and major in something like biology or chemistry or biochemistry. Um, and with a lot of those programs, um, when you're you know doing that pre-professional track, what they've done is they've embedded those prerequisite courses that are required for med school into your degree. Um, and so that's why they call it pre matter pre-professional. Um, so those would be some of our more common pre-med majors, um, but really we have a bunch on campus. Um, so for example, uh, with engineering, we have our biomedical engineering program, which they create and design prosthetics. Um, so if you think of like the prosthetic limb or the prosthetic jaw, it's also a pre-med degree. Um, so you could then apply to med school afterwards. Uh, we also have exercise science, um, which is kinesiology based. It's the study of muscle movement. Um, so in it, if, you know, if you're interested in like occupational therapy or physical therapy or like sports medicine, that might be a good um, avenue to take to then go into pre-med. Um, Really, there's a, um, you can major in just about anything um, and still be pre-med, but then we do have those majors where those courses that are required for med school are built into the degree, um, in which case you have a lot of different options at IUPUI. Thanks, Alyssa. Um, can students double major at IUPUI? I think it was mentioned earlier that you can do it between the IU and the Purdue site. How does that work? Um, do I have a counselor to help me with that? Yeah, so students can earn two um, different degree programs, um, both from IU and Purdue. Um, so you're, when you apply online, you, you'll list one primary major on your application, but then you'll also be able to work with the academic advisor to let them know that you're interested in double majoring and they can refer you, you know, to an academic advisor for the second program um, to make sure that you're fulfilling the um, prerequisites and requirements for that degree program. And I know with liberal arts, um, they have what's called the, um, you know, liberal arts advantage where students can graduate with 
a science degree and then add liberal arts and still graduate within four years. I think the key thing is, you know, working with your advisor and making sure that you're fulfilling all the requirements for that. And sometimes it's just, um, you know, maybe not as many classes as you think to, you know, that you need to earn two degree programs. And it helps you be more marketable um, when you're um, looking at graduate school or maybe applying to jobs and helps to fulfill maybe inter other interests that you have too. Um, being in Indianapolis, are there any specific fun things to do in the city professionally and also for fun? So not right now, <laughs> but overall, um, there are so many things to do. I know some of my favorite things um, were going to Mass Ave because they have some uh, Mass Ave and Fountain Square because they have some really, really great restaurants. Um, but also students have uh, free or discounted access to places like the zoo, to the Indiana State Museum, to the um, art museum that's in Indy. Um, and then we also have those professional athletics. So I mentioned Lucas Oil earlier, if you want football, we also have Banker's Life for basketball. And both of those host large concerts. So like those stadium sized concerts, um, as well as some smaller venues. So um, the um, lawn at White River is I think one of the best outdoor venues in the area. Um, it's really great and uh, it's not super expensive because it's all lawn seating. Um, and then we also have just tons of other venues. So if you wanted to do concerts or theater or museums, they're all available close by. Um, and so those are some of my favorite things to do. I think we've got about three minutes left, so maybe time for one or two more questions. Um, are there any clubs that are really popular on campus that you would recommend or know about? And then do you have like a more common major that students tend to go towards? Um, as far as clubs, I would say we have, I mean, there's like over 500 clubs. So there's a ton to choose from. Um, but we do have some really popular large events on campus. So we have the regatta every year in September, and that's a canoe race down the canal. Um, and so that's a really, really big event because it's our fall homecoming. And so there's a lot of things that lead up to that. So things like battleships where you're in the same canoes as the, um, the regatta, but instead of paddling, everybody has buckets and you're trying to sink all of the other boats before they sink you. Um, we also have usually movies in the natatorium where you can sit in, in, in an intertube and watch a movie. Um, and then um, there's the regatta steering committee that is actually the committee that plans the regatta. Um, and so that's one of the big ones. We also have Jagapalooza uh, in the spring, which is like a carnival for IUPUI students. And Jagathon is where the Jaguars, we have a lot of Jaguar things. Um, and that is a fundraiser for Riley Children's Hospital, which is one of the four hospitals on campus. And so um, that's a big event. There are smaller dance marathons that take place around the state, but ours is unique because we have Riley Hospital on our campus. Students actually go to the hospital as part of the event. So um, that's another one of the really big events on campus. Um, and so those are some of my favorite things. I know when I was a student here, I also did Swing Cats, which is a swing dancing club. So there's something for everybody. <laughs> What was your last question, Melissa? I'm sorry. The question was um, more common or most popular majors that you see students select. Yeah, I think in terms of popular majors at IUPUI, um, nursing is um, one of our more popular majors and, and really anything kind of the healthcare areas um, since we're known as a health and life sciences campus. Um, but business um, majors within the IU Kelly School of Business, um, science majors, um, those are some of our more popular programs on campus, engineering, technology areas. I think we have about one minute left um, in our platform here. So are there any final comments or thoughts from panelists or attendees? My biggest advice when you're applying to places is to apply and take care of things early. Don't wait till the deadline. Try to have everything turned in by New Year's. So if you haven't yet, submit your application. And then if you're eligible, apply for the Honors College and then complete your FAFSA. 
and then apply for those other competitive scholarships and housing before New Year's. This way you're not rushing and panicking before the deadline and giving yourself a bunch of unnecessary stress. That's my biggest advice. <laughs> I second Haley, definitely try to get in everything so you can then apply for scholarships, apply for housing. The sooner you can do it, the better. And definitely contact any of us or your uh, admissions counselor for your school. And, you know, we're happy to have a phone call with you or a Zoom meeting or, you know, if you just want to ask questions via email, you know, we're here for you. Thank you so much for answering all the questions, you guys. With that, I just want to uh, finalize our webinar today. Thank you to the presenters for taking time and presenting to everyone today and for everyone who joined us, participants. Um, there will be a quick survey after you close the window. It'll only be four questions. If you could take just a couple minutes to answer that and be sure to sign up for more sessions. You can check out the schedule at this website here at anacac.org and the recording will be available afterwards if you'd like to see it. Thanks again, everyone. Have a good day.